Hello, my name is Zach with the City and County of Denver. In this video, I'll be giving a brief overview of the Denver Building Performance Policy and what building owners need to do to achieve compliance with the law. The Denver Building Performance Policy, or BPP, is a law adopted in 2021 that sets energy performance standards for most commercial and multifamily buildings in the City and County of Denver. The BPP consists of three types of requirements. Energy performance requirements for all buildings 25,000 square feet and larger. Prescriptive lighting or solar requirements for all buildings between 5,000 square feet and 24,999 square feet. And electrification requirements for all commercial and multifamily buildings of any size. In this video series, we'll look at the performance requirements for buildings 25,000 square feet and larger. The Office of Climate Action, Sustainability and Resiliency is tasked with implementing the Denver Building Performance Policy. In the city's climate action plan, Denver has committed to eliminating greenhouse gas emissions by 2040. Commercial and multifamily buildings account for approximately 49% of Denver's greenhouse gas emissions. The goal is for all existing buildings and homes to achieve net zero energy by 2040. The majority of these emissions come from buildings 25,000 square feet and larger. The ordinance was developed from recommendations from the Energize Denver Task Force that met in 2021 and was charged with getting existing buildings and homes to net zero energy by 2040. You can learn more about the task force process on the Energize Denver Hub website. Denver buildings 25,000 square feet and larger must meet energy performance targets measured by a metric called Weather Normalized Site Energy Use Intensity, or Site EUI. Site EUI is the amount of fuel energy and electricity consumed by a building as reflected in utility bills divided by the gross square footage of the building. If you're looking in Portfolio Manager, make sure you are looking at the weather normalized version of your building site EUI. Any commercial, multifamily, institutional, municipal, manufacturing, agricultural, or industrial building in the city and county of Denver that is 25,000 square feet or larger must meet energy performance targets by 2030. This table shows several of the 2030 targets for common building types. The full table has targets for 70 different types of buildings. To set these targets, we analyzed all benchmarked buildings in Denver and reviewed national EUI datasets. To move our buildings in the direction of meeting Denver's 2040 climate goals, we set the targets at the 85th percentile. Buildings performing in the top 15% of their building type have already met the EUI targets and only have to maintain their energy performance. Mixed-use buildings have a blended target based on the percentage of gross floor area assigned to the three largest building types reported in the building's 2019 benchmarking data. The 2030 performance targets are common to all buildings within a building type. So, there is a 2030 EUI target that all office buildings are required to meet, a 2030 EUI target for all multifamily buildings, and so on. The 2024 and 2027 targets, called interim performance targets, will be different for each building. These are set based on the slope of the line connecting a building's EUI performance, as reported in its 2019 benchmarking data, with the 2030 EUI target for its building type. Here's a graph showing the performance trajectory for a hypothetical building. There are several unique building types where a robust data set was not readily available to assign a 2030 target, or their operations vary widely enough between buildings that an EUI target was not assigned. These building types were assigned a target that is a 30% reduction from their 2019 baseline. If these buildings are already high performing, they have an alternate compliance option. They can work with the City of Denver to get an energy reduction target that more accurately reflects the existing conditions in their building. There are other building types that have different targets or additional compliance options. Manufacturing, agricultural, and industrial buildings, shortened to the acronym MAI, are covered under a specific alternate compliance option. Rules for this option will be written later in 2023. Data centers have been split into two categories. Class A data centers cover more than 15% of the square footage of the building and typically manufacture data as their core business, so they qualify as an MAI building. Class B data centers cover less than 15% of the building's area. In this case, the building will be eligible for a target adjustment based on the square footage of the data center. For new construction, 
we will set 2030 and interim targets within six months of receiving benchmarking data for the first full calendar year after the building has received its certificate of occupancy and begun operations. In the November 2022 BPP rulemaking, we created an official definition for campuses so that we could create certain considerations and options for this group of buildings. In 2024, 2027, and 2030, the City of Denver will check your annual benchmarking report to see if your site EUI is at or below your performance target for the year. If your building achieves the performance target, you're in compliance. If not, your building is subject to a target penalty of 30 cents per KBTU in excess of the target. Buildings must maintain their interim targets each subsequent year until the next performance target, and they must maintain the final 2030 performance target indefinitely. The City of Denver will check your building's annual benchmarking report to confirm that it is maintaining the required site EUI performance. If your building does not maintain the 2030 performance target, it will be subject to a maintenance penalty of $0.05 cents per KBTU in excess of the target. The graph on this slide shows an example of an office building that achieved and maintained its required level of performance for all targets. We've approved a timeline adjustment for the 94% of covered buildings that completed their 2022 benchmarking submission. Their 2024 target has been moved back one year to 2025. The remaining buildings still have a chance to fix their 2022 benchmarking report to get this timeline adjustment. All a building has to do to comply with the performance requirements is meet each target when it's due and prove that through the annual submission of the benchmarking report. There are multiple ways to adjust the performance requirements to your building's needs. Buildings with specific circumstances are eligible to get an adjustment to their 2030 targets. Buildings that use electricity for 80% or more of their total energy use can qualify for a 10% credit against their 2030 target. Building owners can also use renewable energy generation to fill the gap between their energy performance and the target. Additionally, building owners can apply for one or more alternate compliance options to create a custom compliance plan. These options include the timeline adjustment, the electrification option, the 30% reduction property type adjustment, and alternate compliance pathways for manufacturing, agricultural, and industrial buildings. For more information on the alternate compliance options, see the video titled, How to Apply for an Alternate Compliance Option. We will evaluate a building's performance on an annual basis and will send building owners a scorecard to let them know how they are progressing toward their goal but penalties are only assessed in the years a performance target is due. For example, the 2024 target evaluation is based on the 2024 calendar year of benchmarking data. Building owners have until June 1, 2025 to turn in the information. Once June 1st passes, we start evaluating compliance with the 2024 target. Here are the steps we'll take in evaluating performance. First, we look at whether or not you have an alternate compliance option that changed your target dates. Step two is to check the percent electricity value in the most recent benchmarking report and apply the electrification credit if needed. Step three is to evaluate if renewable credit information has been submitted and adjust the performance KBTU accordingly. Then with that final value, we'll compare it against the target value and see if the building met the target. The city of Denver completed a study estimating the average cost of compliance for Denver buildings which ranged from $0.10 cents per KBTU all the way up to nearly $2 per KBTU, depending on what the building did and including major renovations. While the ordinance allows Denver to charge up to $0.70 cents per KBTU not achieved, we are setting the penalty at $0.30 cents per KBTU. For the performance requirements, there are two types of penalties, target penalties and maintenance penalties. A target penalty is assessed if the building did not reach either an interim or the 2030 target. Maintenance penalties would be assessed after a building has met the 2030 target but failed to maintain that EUI performance. For maintenance penalties, if a building swings too far away from the target, the building would be switched back to the target penalty level until they get their energy performance back to the expected level. This slide shows the timeline we will be using to assess penalties for most buildings. Between now and 2030, we will be focusing on penalties for the interim and 2030 targets. 
This graphic shows an example of a building with 2024, 2027, and 2030 targets. We will not assess maintenance penalties in the years in between the targets. Maintenance penalties do not begin until after the 2030 target has been reached. You can find detailed descriptions of the requirements of all the compliance options in the Energize Denver Benchmarking and Performance Requirements Technical Guidance Document, which you can find on the Energize Denver Hub website for buildings 25,000 square feet and larger.